Okay, so we'll add a bit more detail to the same idea of the Earth system, but now we will add human activities. It's funny to say human activities as if it's separate from the Earth system. What we mean here is something you should understand as a concept is something we already said and anything, anything at all that changes the energy balance is a forcing right sun is the forcing because it's giving us the energy and that's the whole crux of the energy balance volcanoes are changing the energy balance by emitting oops let's bring up the laser pointer emitting chemicals ash dust which can block sunlight change albedo absorb energy reflect energy and so on and so forth so they are changing the uh, energy balance so they are a forcing as well sun also you know we change our orbits around the sun the tilt the ellipticity and the precession and uh, we call that also orbital forcing and that is part of the natural climate change cycle humans are also changing the energy balance because they are taking out things buried deep in the earth like what we call fossil fuels fossil means something that's buried a long time ago so we dig it up and we burn it so carbon that is in the coal the gas the petrol and so on which is safely hidden away from the climate system is being pulled out of the earth and being burned and is changing the greenhouse gas concentration and it is actually changing the energy balance so now we are a forcing hence we can think of the natural system and the human system which is what we are talking about here so start again with our sun's energy which creates uh, temperatures uh, water cycle atmospheric circulation because of the uh, deficit energy at high latitudes surplus energy at low latitudes I say this every time because you should really get very 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 familiar with that concept of why we are on a sphere and how we create energy deficit and energy surplus when we consider incoming shortwave energy and outgoing thermal energy okay so we have winds and we have evaporation and condensation and clouds and rain and snowfall here and snowfall over there and we have uh, you know energy balance with thermal energy reflection because of the albedo of the sunlight itself and we have radiation which is affected by the greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect now what are human beings doing w remember we talked about these feedbacks and there are some loops you can see right because winds drive the uh, ocean currents winds drive uh, water cycle by evaporation and so on human beings what are we doing let's say we go back in time again okay when did human beings evolve this is a tough question but let's say about two million years ago we were not in the same form as we are now but when we say that we were talking uh, we are talking about were we walking upright or were we like our ancestors the chimpanzees and gorillas walking on all four legs you can go even further back but uh, how big was the brain and what were we doing right so if you go back just about 18,000 years, 12,000 years ago even, we were called hunter-gatherers, right? We were already able to use weapons, build weapons, and for food, we gathered things from natural vegetation and forests and roots and so on. We also hunted animals for meat, and we were very small in the total population right but the last ice age ended it started about a hundred and thirty thousand years ago and kept getting you know bigger and bigger in terms of the glacier cover and the ice cover on the ocean and changes in temperature globally kept cooling and so on and our ancestors homo sapiens I mean we are homo sapiens but we had relatives like Neanderthals 
which lived with us they uh, bred together with us which means they intermingled with human beings and there were offspring there were kids born between humans and Neanderthals and we don't know exactly why but Neanderthals disappeared probably as recently as 26,000 years ago so when the Ice Age ended and suddenly there was warm temperatures and rainfall and uh, vegetation was you know domestic the wild grasses like wheat rice and roots like potatoes and so on were growing we began to adjust to the new climate the Holocene started we are in the Holocene H-O-L-O-C-E-N-E -E. you can go up uh, go and look for podcasts on the Holocene from my channel or there are many other uh, YouTube videos and Google information as well so the modern human beings that we are we mostly evolved in the last 10,000 years or so and from hunter-gatherers we began we began to become very good at domesticating the wild grasses and start doing agriculture so we started to grow rice wheat and other cereals and fruits and vegetables and so on o over time to live you know when you are hunter-gatherer you tend to move around finding animals and moving on whereas once you start doing agriculture you have a piece of land you stay there and you begin to grow more and more uh, crops so this affected the population population began to grow and so on so agricultural activities began to change the pattern of vegetation albedo evaporation precipitation everything by changing the greenhouse gases as well as the energy budget so you can see the feedback there of course there is a feedback because once temperatures begin to warm crops may grow well for some time but then if it is too hot then crops begin to be stressed or they begin to wilt okay and we started burning fossil fuels much more recently we were burning biomass you know the wood pieces you would find or tree barks and other things uh, it's called biomass burning which still happens people go and collect wood from the forests and use them for cooking and for heating during the winters and so on and so forth which is very bad because it produces a lot of particles that you breed like carbon particles uh, which is not good for you right of course it also affects climate through greenhouse effects and so on so forth but in you know once the industrial revolution started and we started to find more coal we started to burn more coal in the 1900s we found petrol oil and gas since then we started to dig up more and more and more a lot of countries produce fossil fuels even though we always hear about Saudi Arabia and you know countries in the Middle East US Venezuela Russia many countries produce oil even India produces some crude oil of course everybody produces coal as well and so on and so forth so we started burning fossil fuels in larger and larger amounts because we have become very used to using energy for everything as I'm speaking I'm getting my energy from eating but that food is produced by agriculture which uses fertilizers tractors and so on I just showed you some water which I'm filtering which is electricity this plastic is produced uh, by using material mining and so on so everything we do has an impact on land and the albedo vegetation and the carbon dioxide fossil fuel burning and the greenhouse gases and of course we also do deforestation for either growing uh, crops like agricultural land sometimes to develop homes sometimes to develop cities and so on sometimes to build roads sometimes to mine for gold and coal and other things and so on and so forth okay all these things got formed a long time ago so when vegetation grows and it has carbon in it or in the water when phytoplankton grow that photosynthesize and capture the carbon from the atmosphere and produce uh, hydrocarbons or carbohydrates in a simple sense and it gets buried 
under pressure and temperature they get converted into oil gas petrol coal and so on and so forth that we are digging up and burning so now the earth system has got a problem because human beings are now a forcing as well okay so in the models that we want to look at where we are going into the future or how the monsoon will look this season or uh, what the winter will look like or what will happen next year or 10 years later we begin to consider all these things because it's not just the sun's energy that is determining how the next season will look like it is also now heavily affected by human activities okay so that's the natural human system or the earth system with humans hammering it away and doing their own thing and acting as a forcing changing energy balance energy budget okay it's also called external forcing because when you put greenhouse gases it's changing the thermal energy going out and it's indeed introduced externally in the sense all those fossil fuels would stay buried unless there was an earthquake and something got released or plate tectonics created a new mountain so when a new mountain got created by uh, as Himalaya for example lots of material organic material photosynthesized material from before would have come up and then the monsoon circulation got started because you moved India so close to the equator why does it matter you have learned already that the monsoon circulation is approximately like a sea breeze land breeze kind of thing if the land is there and it has heat capacity that is very low as the sun comes north in March April May it begins to warm up like a popcorn kettle and any corns kernels of pop you know corn is there it begins to pop like rainfall clouds thunderstorms begin to pop so you can think of India as a popcorn kettle that came close to the equator so it could get very hot and then you began to have monsoon and the winds began to change and what does it mean for Himalayas? Himalayas started getting a lot of rain and cold high altitudes and snow and ice and glaciers which began to also you know break down rocks and so on and so forth. What happens? something called weathering happens you take down that material and flow it down with Ganga and Brahmaputra and Indus and so on and put it into the ocean like the Bay of Bengal or the Arabian Sea so you are removing carbon dioxide from the earth you are reducing greenhouse gases so since the Himalayas began to come up 30 million years ago more and more carbon dioxide was washed out this way by the weathering w-e-a-t-h-e-r-i-n-g rocks are constantly being weathered because rainfall takes CO2 dissolves it and becomes acidic and when it keeps falling on the rocks the rocks begin to lose their material to chemical reactions so that's called weathering so these are the complicated things that happen naturally and because of human activities if human beings change the forests you can imagine that that changes the rainfall and that changes the weathering as well okay so this is how the natural human system or the earth system now with the human imp uh, impact is behaving and it keeps changing and this is what we are worried about how is it changing what does it mean for our future but more importantly your future because I will not be there for much longer as I get older and older but you will hopefully live for a long time you know and you will worry about the future of the environment and the earth for yourselves okay so we'll leave this I'll show a very complicated brochure infographic in the next podcast uh, we'll go through it you don't understand don't worry about it okay so we'll come back and look at the all the complications of the human natural system the uh, climate system and so on in an infographic also provided by the good people of UC Berkeley okay see you in the next podcast <laughs>